Section 2.1, the atomic theory of matter. About 500 or so years before Jesus was born, the Greeks started becoming pretty famous for being philosophers. And they asked questions they sat and just investigated the world uh, by sitting around the campfire and thinking. And the one of the big questions at that time was, can stuff or matter or what the world is made of be divided into fundamental particles? And the kind of the key writer there that kind of stumbled onto what we now think of as correct was Democritus. Um, Democritus lived in the 4th century BC and he was the first to basically state that all matter can be divided into what he called atomos or atoms and the word atom min means indivisible um, for years and years afterwards uh, Aristotle and Plato were the philosophers that everyone during the Middle Ages listened to it really wasn't until um, until John Dalton who was an English school teacher um, in the 1800s in the 19th, um, yeah, 1800s, 19th century, uh, reasserted Democritus' idea that all material, all matter, was actually made up of little Legos uh, that he ref that are now called atoms after Democritus's atomos. So he will he has this theory. He was the first to come up with this theory that's now. Uh, totally accepted. There's n there isn't anything wrong with what he said, even though he wasn't able, uh, he did not have the lab equipment or the technology to see what we can see. Uh, we can actually film atoms on the atomic size on the nanometer scale. Um, we can we can see them interacting with each other. We can we can measure the distances between them and all kinds of stuff now. But he did this all just from conjecture of just thinking about it, and um, he nailed it. So he has these four postulates. Uh, remember, a postulate is uh, something that needs to be accepted before you then um, make a theory. So things that are kind of understood to be true. The first is that each element is composed of extremely small particles called atoms. So that is his first, um, his first postulate, and that the different types of um, the different elements are the diff um, the smallest unit of the different elements are the different atoms. So an atom is the smallest unit that has the same properties of that element that you're talking about. So you have an atom of oxygen or an atom of nitrogen. His second postulate is that all atoms are given uh, of a given element are identical to one another. So um, oxygen is oxygen is oxygen. No matter where it's from, there's not a different flavor. It's a, exactly the same. Uh, the, the properties are the same. Everything is the same. They're identical to each other in mass and all its other properties. But the atoms of one element are different from the atoms of all other elements. So there are actually to our knowledge now, about 118 different types of matter uh, in the universe. The third postulate is atoms of an element are not changed into atoms of a different element by chemical reactions. Um, atoms are neither destroyed nor created in chemical reactions. So we'll see later that, that whatever the mass of the reactants in a chemical reaction the mass of that react of the reactants will be the same as the the mass of the of the products. You can measure it out, and it'll it'll be the same. The fourth uh, postulate is that atoms of more than one element combine to form compounds. So a compound has its own properties. So a compound, not everything you see is one particular type of matter. It the there can be blending of different types of matter in what you see and a compound such as water can be made up of atoms that would not even be liquid not not have the same color not have the same anything about it the the properties change as these elements combine chemically or electrically 
um, a given compound always has the same relative number and kind of atoms. So water is always going to have the same recipe. Two hydrogens, one oxygen combined chemically. So it's not just oxygen and hydrogen in the same neighborhood, but a, but two to one relationship combined chemically will form water, and that water is like all other water. So from from these postulates, he was he then uh, proposed theories that have been accepted by everybody to be a law. So there's just no, nobody has ever come up with anything that even su suggests that there's a question. So it's considered a law. And the first law that he has, actually a couple, is the conservation of mass and the law of definite proportions. Conservation of mass is that you can't, matter doesn't just pop into existence by making a chemical reaction. The same amount of stuff is at the beginning and the same amount of stuff is at the end. They have just reconfigured. The Legos have all broken apart and new Legos have joined together. So the law of conservation of mass, mass can neither be created nor destroyed in a chemical reaction. Here's an example. You've got some stuff and some more stuff. And if you weigh them all out, you've got a certain amount of reactants. When it undergoes conversion or tra uh, transmutation into something new where the Legos all break apart, the iodine and the, and the potassium break apart, the mercury and the nitrogen and the oxygen all break apart, and then reconfigure into the products, and you add the, pro the weights of the products up, you're going to have the same weight that you started with. So this is called the conservation of, of mass, and the law of definite proportions is that that it's always going to be the same proportion um, in any particular compound, like water is always H2O. Here's another example. Um, they've just basically given you a picture of the first example. You have the certain salts that you weigh out, and then you perform the experiment, you filter the, the precipitate, you dry the stuff, and when you do you weigh it all, and it's the same as it was before. The law of definite proportions, I said like H2O, it's always 2 to 1, and he did it in uh, mass. So there's always 89% oxygen um, and 11% hydrogen in every water molecule. So by mass, there's a certain percentage. Uh, by atoms, it's a certain ratio, 2 to 1 for water, for instance. His next law is called the law of multiple proportions. So if you were to um, have something like hydrogen and oxygen coming together to make water, H2O, you can configure them in different ways. You could have a molecule that's not H2O, but H2O2, and it's no longer water. So water, so oxygen can configure with hydrogen in a 2 to 1 hydrogen to oxygen ratio, or a two to two ratio. And he said that if elements can combine in different ways, the mass, um, the mass ratios are small whole number multiples of each other. Meaning what he's saying is that they break down as little Legos and then reconfigure. So the, so for instance, in this case, nitrogen monoxide in O is seven grams of, of nitrogen to eight grams of oxygen. Nitrogen dioxide is 7 grams of oxygen per 16 grams of oxygen. So 8 and 16, 16 is 2 eighths. So they're, they're small whole ratios. So it's, it's basically like a little tiny recipe. That's what he came up with. And this is something that like little kids would think. This is something we all just grow up as though everybody in the world knows this. But this was relatively new idea um, Aristotle and Plato just suggested that it was just things cooling off and warming up and swirling around and mulling over. It's, it's not the idea that all the little building blocks of matter are atoms that then come together to make everything that you can see all in different ratios. That's a relatively new idea. 
So here's the, the nitrous oxide. So N plus O is NO. N plus O2 is NO2. And if you look at the weight of the oxygen, it's going to be exactly twice what the first one was. So small ratios, definite multiple proportions. And so, again, this is the idea of, of the Legos, the atoms, that all things are made up of atoms and that the, these atoms are exactly the same and that they are interchangeable to make new material. So all matter is made up of a, of a combination, chemical combination of all the different types of atoms called elements that we have. And then the last, the chemical combination of elements to make different chemical compounds occurs when atoms join in small ratios. So 2 to 2, 2 to 1, and then um, you can compare one type of mat matter, one type of compound to another, and if it's the same stuff in it, if there's hydrogen and oxygen, for instance, it'll always be either a 2 to 2 relationship, 2 to, two to 1 relationship, something where it's multiples of what we had before. So so in terms of what we owe to that English school teacher uh, who never had very much fame in his lifetime, uh, he has he has done great things. So there's hope for us too.